So when astronauts go into space, what happens is they lose bone and they lose muscle. So for being in a microgravity environment, you can lose up to about 1% per week of bone mass when in space, and you can lose significant amount of, of muscle. Now the second the crew member is being extracted. When they return from space, sometimes they're so weak that they can collapse, and all this, the, the heart is so atrophied, so, so much smaller, that they lose consciousness. So I'm Dr. David Green at King's College London, and I work with the European Space Agency and MIT. Maybe some sort of weaved material with elastic properties, like We're a... developing the gravity-loading skin suit in an attempt to address all of these problems. We want a suit that loads the body just like gravity. How do you think we can do that? Ah, so we use hooks. So the suit is trying to reimpose the force of gravity on the body. So by compressing us from our shoulders towards our feet, we're reloading the spine, reloading the muscle, reloading all the bones in a way that's similar to that force. And one of the key things about asking an astronaut to wear anything is it must not stop them doing their daily work and it must not mean that you would delay their ability to leave the station if there was a problem. Phil is about to take part in a maximum exercise test. So one of the concerns is whether the suit will increase the amount of oxygen that is required for the same exercise. So Phil, in a moment, I'll just be taking a finger prick lactate measurement. In addition to using oxygen to produce energy, you can also use anaerobic metabolism, so without oxygen to produce energy. So we're measuring how much lactate Phil's muscles are producing. So the suit performed well and it didn't appear to encumber Phil's ability to do maximal exercise, which is a concern for astronauts. Ready for shoulder press? Yep. So we also needed to see whether the suit was well tolerated from a thermal perspective. So when doing maximal exercise, or whether people got extra hot. So Phil's doing a sit and reach test, which is, which is testing his flexibility and his ability to contract the muscles to stretch and reach onto the board. Reach, 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 reach. Wow, that's brilliant. And relax, 25. So the suit made it a little bit harder to do that exercise, but it didn't stop you from, from, from doing it. No. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're measuring the force that's measured at the shoes. So as you're standing up, we, have, we are measuring the force produced by gravity plus the force produced by the skin suit. So at the moment, you'll be experiencing more than one G. So that went very well. So in the suit that Phil was uh, wearing, there's about 0 0.8 of a G. So 80% of one G was being produced by the suit. The suit needs work, yes. But we're on the right track. You can get your things ah, So we use hooks to pull yeah. the parts of the like suit up. Yeah. Ah, the next version of the suit, we move the zipper, so rather than being in the front, we put it at the back to make it easier to put it on and off. With that suit, we also needed to establish whether it affected the way our cardiovascular system works. OK, Julia, so lay back, shuffle down, so we put your feet. So we're going to strap you in, because when we tilt you, we don't want you to fall out. So what we did next is we did tilt table testing. OK, Julia, I'm just going to connect your leads now so we can measure your heart rate response. So tilt table testing is a way to test the cardiovascular system's ability to adapt to a change in orientation. Because in space, you have an, a movement of fluid from the feet towards the head. OK, so Julia, what we're going to do now is tilt you from horizontal to a head down tilt. Are you ready? Phil, you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Perfect. OK. What we're seeing is fluid is moving down towards the, the head and neck. And we can see it's engorging the, the neck and filling up the, the blood vessels of the, the head and of the face. And that's something that we see in microgravity. Do you feel any congestion in your head or neck? A little bit in my nose. We like the suit, but we really needed to make it even easier to put on and off, unaided, in microgravity. OK, you're back to horizontal. We've now developed the Mark V suit, and that suit has incorporated all the benefits of the, the previous versions, and now we really need to put it into action. Phil, Julia and myself, including a European Space Agency astronaut, we got the opportunity to go on a parabolic flight. You experience about 22 seconds of weightlessness. One of its other names is the Vomit Comet, 
uh, for obvious reasons. It is the closest thing that we can do on Earth that's uh, like being in space. But nothing really prepares you for that moment where suddenly you rise up and you're, and as I said, you're as free as a bird. So the suit is scheduled to fly in September 2015. Hopefully, one day, the skin suit technology could help astronauts go to Mars. I'm unlikely to become an astronaut, so this way, I make a contribution to the bigger goals of mankind. <laughs>